Ladies and gentlemen, you know, it's a lot of damage done in the Bahamas by Hurricane Dorian. It still has not reached the coast of America yet, but they are saying, I saw anywhere from 5 p.m. today to 6 p.m. So just anticipate sometime tonight the storm will hit the southeastern portion of the United States. They are still saying it's Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas that will be hit the hardest by Hurricane Dorian. So it left a trail of destruction so far across the Bahamas, and it's very slow moving on top of that, you know? So it's destructive and it's lingering for long periods of time, which will increase even more property damage and they said so far, one death and it was a child. So this came out in the Daily Mail, September 2nd, 2019. Second strongest storm in history, Hurricane Dorian crawls across the Bahamas at record slow speed, destroying 13,000 homes and killing one with 225 mile per hour gust as millions evacuate in the U.S. admit fears for Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Now, for a while, they said it would miss Florida and hit the Carolinas. Now they're backtracking and saying that Florida is still in the path of the hurricane. So it made landfall at a uh, category five in the Bahamas, and they... <laughs> I showed you some of the videos. They got battered pretty badly. And it's no telling what shape they are in hours later. So my prayers go out to all of my brothers and sisters on the island. And I really hope that you are all safe. That looked like a very treacherous hurricane. All right. Look like Loretta want to be part of this video. How you doing, girl? Um, so Hurricane Dorian was crawling across the Bahamas this morning as it battered the islands with 185 mile per hour winds that destroy homes, shredded roofs, and toppled power lines with hundreds of thousands of Americans now preparing to evacuate as the storm move into their path. Yes, if you can get out, get out. Now, I did read that there were six counties in Florida that had gas shortages. So, you know, those things are going to happen. And I know there's a bottled water shortage too. The category five hurricane was lingering over the island of Grand Bahama today, causing catastrophic conditions as it moved westward at just one mile per hour. Oh my goodness. Oh, 13,000 homes and leaving an airport under five feet of water. Dorian made landfall with wind speeds of 185 miles an hour yesterday, making it the second strongest Atlantic storm on record and the joint strongest ever to hit land. A seven-year-old boy is believed to have drowned in the storm. I think that is horrible. I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. So a seven-year-old has drowned, and they said the wind gusts were clocked at 225 miles an hour. They got up to 30 inches of rain. Woo, that's from one storm. Do you realize there are places on this planet that don't even get 30 inches of rain in a year? They got this from one storm. While experts warn of possible uh, storm surge, which they will definitely get, a category five could send destructive waves barreling into the Bahamas. The storm is expected to move towards Florida later on Monday 
as coastal dwellers flee their homes in Georgia, Florida, and South Carolina, admit warnings of life-threatening weather conditions. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I wish I could say it was over for the Bahamas, but it's not. It's not. And it's a shame. The U.S. seaboard is not currently forecast to take a direct hit, but experts say the storm is still extremely dangerous. And even a glancing blow could bring torrential rains and destructive winds. In addition, Dorian could yet veer off course and hit mainland with Orlando and even Walt Disney World potentially under threat if the path of the storm changes. The storm is at this magnitude. Uh, the, this storm at this magnitude could really cause massive destruction. Do not put your life in jeopardy by staying behind when you have a chance to get out, warned Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. In Washington, Trump met with his emergency management chiefs and declared, this looks monstrous. It sure does. Oh, that just looks horrible. Oh, my heart goes out to the people in the Bahamas. Oh, that looks terrible. Mm. So they're still showing Dorian's path as making landfall in Florida and then moving up the coast uh, to Georgia and the Carolinas. That's still how they're forecasting it. They said this thing in size is huge. You know, some of these hurricanes can be over 300 miles wide. You know, I was studying a lot about hurricanes after we would, hit, you know, we were hit with Hurricane Sandy. And there are many that average at 300, you know, 300 miles wide. I mean, that is just unimaginable for one storm to be that massive. But these hurricanes, they can get really big. They really can. It is just not safe, especially when you start hitting. To me, even a two and three is too dangerous. Look at all that water they're under in the Bahamas. Yeah, those roofs are gone. Yeah, they're definitely gone. Oh my goodness. You know, when you think about Puerto Rico, they haven't even bounced back, y'all. It's been two years and they have not fully recovered. You see inside of the home, the windows broke out. So it's flooding inside of the home. You can see pieces of the roof flying. Wow. Look at that. That's a shame. Here's the baby that they said drowned. Oh. Lashino McIntosh, seven years old, is to have drowned near his home in Abaco, the Bahamas. Oh, that poor baby. Oh my goodness. All right, so they're warning that the storm surge in the Bahamas could be anywhere from 18 to 23 feet. These are the waves that are coming in, 18 to 23 feet, which is going to cause even more destruction when you think about it. These hazards will cause extreme destruction in the affected areas and will continue for several hours, the agency said. Up to 30 inches of rain are expected and Grand Bahama National Airport was said to be under five feet of water. 
in the early hours of Monday. All right, so look like a minister, Hubert Menace, broke down in tears as he addressed a news conference, calling it probably the most sad and worst day of my life. Oh, my goodness. Dorian first came ashore Sunday at Elbow K in Abaco Island at 12.40 p.m., then made a second landfall near Marsh Harbor at 2 p.m. In parts of Abaco, you can't tell the difference as to the beginning of the street versus where the ocean begins. Wow. That poor baby, I feel so sorry for him that drowned. Oh, that's so horrible. And that's not even it. They said the young boy is reported to have drowned while his family was trying to seek shelter. McIntosh's sister, whose age is unknown, is also reported to be missing. So the sister is also missing. That is horrible. It's horrible, this family losing two children, just trying to seek shelter. Oh my goodness, this is horrible. This is so bad. So ladies and gentlemen, you know, a lot of times when these storms happen, when the hurricane finally break up, we usually get the remnants of it up in my area. So if it hits Monday, probably by Wednesday, we'll get the heavy showers and winds and rain from whatever's left of the hurricane. That's usually how it works. Wow. So ladies and gentlemen, you know, this is definitely horrible for the Bahamas. But please tell me what you think. I pray that the Most High keeps a hedge of protection around all of our brothers and sisters enduring this devastation on Monday morning in the Bahamas. I really hope you are all okay. And I hope the fatalities are low. Wow. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.